content. Beginning with the skeletal system. We have two major categories for bones, okay? We have axle and app appendicular. Um, let's actually start with appendicular. Sorry, it's supposed to be one and two. I don't know why it went one and one, um, but one and two. Appendicular refers to your limbs, okay? Um, your kind of, yeah, your limbs, your arms and your legs, okay? Um, they provide movement and support for your limbs, okay? That's what the appendicular system or the appendicular skeleton, um, that's its function. Provide movement and support your limbs. It refers to the pectoral girdle, your upper limbs, your pelvic girdle, and your lower limbs. Okay, so pecs, your pecs, oh my gosh, not Siri. Everything's going wrong today. I don't know if you guys just saw Siri come up on my laptop, but hopefully she doesn't come up again. Okay, um, yeah, think your pecs, okay, so your pectoral girdle, your, your shoulder region, and your upper limbs, and then your pelvic girdle, so your hip region, and your lower limbs. Then we have axle. Axle refers to everything else, okay, not your limbs. So your head, neck, and trunk. When we say trunk, we mean um, your middle kind of center cavity. Um, they are not responsible for movement and support for your limbs. They're responsible for providing an access to your body for support and protection of your organs in these sections. So they allow us to stand upright and have structure when we move and everything's kind of not just flopping all over the place. Okay, so it gives an access to our body. Of course, especially in the trunk region and in the cranium, it protects our brain and our other organs in our trunk region. So that's its other function. This refers to the skull, sacrum, rib cage, and vertebral column. Okay, so the one on the left, appendicular. The one on the right, axial skeleton. All right, so starting with the head, okay, the cranium. These are the bones um, of of the cranium or of the skull. We have our frontal bone. This is nice and easy to remember because it's at the front, okay, the very front. Immediately behind that is the parietal bone, okay, so this would be my parietal bone. Then we have the temporal bone below that. Please don't get confused. A lot of people think temp uh, temples are here, so temporal would be here. No, okay, that's frontal. Temporal is where kind of your ears are. Then we have the sphenoid bone slightly in front of that um, it's actually just like kind of here and then you have our nasal bone zygomatic arch or it's zygomatic bone but this here is the arch it's your um like cheekbone okay what, what everyone refers to as like your cheekbone it's a zygomatic bone you can feel it and that kind of arch that it has underneath your eye is it's is the zygomatic arch then we have the ethmoid bone, which is inside your nose, the maxilla, which is the top half of your jaw, and the mandible, which is your jaw, okay? So not that difficult to remember these parts. What does become difficult is when you start to, for example, if you have to do an in-person spot test, not everything's nice and colored like this. They'll give you a skull, okay, maybe not they'll give you a skull, but they'll show you a skull. It sounded very confrontational, but they'll show you a skull and they'll point at something. You do have these fissures, okay? Remember I was saying fissures before. These are fissures where you can literally see, you will see on the skull um, kind of where the two bones connect and you'll see this fissure, this crevice going in between all of them. So you can kind of make it out, but again, just know it's more tricky because everything's one color. Um, it doesn't, nothing's as kind of, structured as this so it's not like you know it, one uh, one bone one frontal bone might be bigger on one person than it is on the other person so it, it's not as neat and pretty i mean um than this um but yeah so those are all the bones of the cranium then we have the vertebral column we have 33 vertebrae okay we have seven cervical which is this first region don't say cervical because we can get it confused then with um, cervical system of a female. So cervical, uh, cervical vertebrae, which is the top seven. Then thoracic, which is the next 12. And lumbar, which is the next five. Okay, so those are the big main regions. Then after that, we have a sacrum, which is one bone. But through evolution, it really started off as five, but then five of them fused together to make one. Okay, so now we only have one sacrum, but at different points in history, they were five and then fused together to just create one. 
and we have a coccyx, okay, which is your tailbone. Um, again, that used to be four, but now they fuse together to just create one coccyx, okay, or a coccygeal vertebrae. So that are all, those are all the sections of your spine. Now, fun way to remember the first three is you eat breakfast at 7 a.m., so seven cervical. You eat lunch at 12 p.m., thoracic, 12 thoracic, and then you have dinner at 5 p.m., five lumbar, okay? And then it's kind of easy just to remember one and one after that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a little nice way to remember it. I'm going to give you more of those, more kind of acronyms and stuff you can remember to um, remember different parts of the body, but that's your vertebral column. Now, we have primary versus secondary structures in your vertebral column. Okay, so your primary curvature occurs in your thoracic and sacral vertebrae. Okay, so your thoracic and sacral. Notice that they both convex, okay, convex, which means to do this, not this, this. They convex oh, posteriorly towards the back. Notice they do this. They go towards the back, all right? So they convex posteriorly. Those are your primary curvatures, okay? Why are they primary? Uh, because they begin, they start to curve as you begin to walk and your spine helps support the weight of your trunk, okay? They happen as you begin to walk, okay? Um, oh, sorry, no, no, no. Um, as you begin to lift your head and your spine starts to support the weight of your spine. Sorry, your head, that's supposed to say. Your secondary curvature is your lumbar spine, okay? So primary, your thoracic and sacral is when you begin to lift your head. And then secondary, which is cervical and lumbar, cervical and lumbar is as you begin to walk you need to have support and lift up your trunk so that's the secondary curvature it comes after so primary is as you're a child a newborn you begin to lift your head we get curvature in the thoracic and uh, thoracic and sacral uh, vertebrae and then secondary is lumbar and uh, cervical and that's when you begin to walk and your body starts to support its axis Okay, if you have any questions about that, please let me know, because I know that might be a bit tricky. Yeah, okay, so here's a better diagram. So at birth, and you can start to see that curvature, and the, as the child starts to lift its head, um, and then you see more curvature. All right, so going to the bones of the upper limb and shoulder girdle. In the shoulder girdle, the two main ones I want you to know at this stage are clavicle and scapula. So your collarbone is actually your clavicle, okay? And then behind that, so posterior to the clavicle, remember behind, is the scapula, okay? Um, which is your, uh, like, shoulder bone. It, when people try and, like, I don't know if you can, like, flex it out, um, that's, your, that's your scapula. You can feel the pointy bit at the back of your um, shoulder or, like, below your shoulder, that's your scapula, okay? So clavicle, which you can see, connects or articulates with the scapula and then with the forearm uh, sorry let's go with the arm we have the humerus okay and then below that we have the forearm where we have the radius and ulna the best way to remember it remember we're in anatomical position so this hand is facing upwards like this best way to remember it is think of a radius of a circle it goes from the center to the most outward point of the circle. So think of the radius as it goes from the most center or it goes from the midline to the most outward one. So it's the outward one, okay, between the two. That's the way I remembered it. Radius is the outward one. So radius, and then we have the ulna. Then we have the hands. We have three sections. We have the carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. Okay, nice and easy. Now, there is more to this, I won't lie. You will need to know each depression, the name of each depression, of each condyle. So this is a condyle that I was talking about. See how it's circular at the top? You'll need to know a lot more names than just this. But I'm not trying to shock you too much today, so I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to kind of give you a brief overview. But just know what's coming is that you will need to know, especially at um, articulating points, so where they attach, you will need to know each name of each depression, neck, fossa, everything, okay? Um, all right, and then the lower limb and pelvic girdle. 
In the pelvic girdle, we have the pelvic bone, okay? Now, I this, if we went over this, it would take over probably a third of the lecture to go over the entire pelvic girdle. So I'm not going to today as well. But just know with the pelvic girdle, there is so much more to know than just the pelvic girdle, okay, or the hip bone. You will need to know every single part of basically every single part of the pelvic girdle. I won't lie, there is a lot to it. Um, posterior and anterior, you'll need to know everything about it. Um, and that is tricky because, yeah, there's a lot to that. Okay, and then with the leg, we have the tibia and fibula. Okay, oh, sorry, that's the lower leg. Lower leg is tibia and fibula. And then the upper leg is the femur. Okay, um, and then foot, instead of carpals, we have tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges again. Okay, so leg, we have the femur. And lower leg, we have the tibia and the fibula. Um, I was going to say something. Yes, for the person that was asking about distal and um, proximal, I can't remember your question exactly, but distal going away from the attachment. That's what I was trying to say um, earlier. Proximal going closer to the attachment. All right, the lower limb and pelvic girdle. For the lower limb, um, again, this is what I was talking about, tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges, okay, instead of carpals like we have with the hand. All right, hopefully we kind of got some of that in because now I'm going to ask you another revision um, question. Let me just find the question. Okay, which main categories of bone make up the bones of the hands? Is it carpals, metacarsals, phalanges, carsals, metacarsals, knuckles, phalanges, Carpals, metacarpals, phalanges, tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges. What do we think? Oh, okay, we got some different answers. Okay, I'll give you guys a minute. All right. Okay, answer is C, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges, okay? Um, it's not A because it's not castles, it's carpals. Um, it's not B because knuckles is like a colloquial or a layman word for uh, metacarsals. We don't call them knuckles, just like we don't say collarbone, we say clavicle. Um, so no, it is C, carpals, metacarpals and phalanges. And remember D would be for your feet, not for your hands. All right, uh, let me do the next one. Yep, okay. In anatomical position, which forearm bone is most lateral? Radius or on? What do we think? And again, I'll give you guys a few minutes just to answer it. Okay, we've got a 50-50 split right now. Okay, I'll just wait a few seconds for everyone to submit. If you haven't submitted yet, give it a go. There's only, you have a 50% chance of getting it right if you don't know, so just give it a shot. Okay, cool. So, answer is A, radius. Okay, remember. What I said about like the radius of a circle goes from the midline, if we want to use anatomical um, terminology, but it goes from the center to the most outward point of the circle. If you think of a radius, think of the bone like that. It goes from, think of the most midline point to the most outside. Okay, so it's the most outside bone in anatomical position on your um, arm. Okay, most, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but 
I, I want to do it like this because so it's in anatomical position, the most outward bone. Okay, which sections, I'll stop that one and then do this one. Which sections of your spine is part of your primary curvature? Let's see if we remember. And I'll wait a second. All right, we've got some. Give it a second. Okay, we've got a bit of a split. Okay, I think this is our most split one yet. All right, might stop it there. Correct answer B, okay, thoracic and sacral. Um, that's really just memorization. Um, remember, they convex posteriorly as you begin to lift your head as a newborn. Now, um, as you begin to walk, which section of your spine curves? Let me do this one. It's kind of the ones that weren't just the ones we did. So that's a bit of a hint. Okay, I'll give you guys a second. Okay. Um, so, answer is lumbar and cervical, okay? I don't know why I've only highlighted lumbar, but both of them. Trick question, two answers, okay? So, lumbar and cervical. All right, which bone are we referring to when we say the collarbone? Give this one a shot. Do we mean the scapula, the clavicle, the sternum, or the humerus? What do we think? Okay, I've said this one a few times, so hopefully we remember. Okay, cool. Clavicle, yes. Okay, the clavicle is the collarbone. All right, let's.